Hello everyone, this is my review of the Echo 2500T electric top handle chainsaw. It is Echo's newest battery powered chainsaw for arborists working in um, tree surgery situations, so aerial tree surgery stuff. And they came really highly recommended for a number of reasons. Now, first of all, um, I was looking at a battery chainsaw and there were basically three that came to mind. Uh, one was uh, this one, the Echo 2500T. Um, the next one was the still MSA 161T, which a lot of people seem to say, um, despite stills otherwise amazing reputation, um, the MSA 161T didn't really seem to cut the mustard, it seemed. So um, a lot of people were sort of like, yeah, not so sure about that. And then after that, it was the Husqvarna, um, which I believe is the T540i XP, um, which is, by the looks of things, again, I haven't used it, but it looks like an amazing saw. So one of the main reasons I didn't go for the Husqvarna was the price, um, which was that it was for this whole unit. So for the, um, the chainsaw itself, the rapid charger, two batteries, you're looking at about 650 pounds in the UK um, with VAT on top of that. Now, when we bought it, which is to say my boss bought it through his company, um, it was it would have been plus VAT if I had bought it. So it would have been more like 750, 775 maybe. Um, the Husqvarna, you'd be looking at, for uh, the chainsaw and two batteries, you'd be looking at closer to a thousand pounds, if not even more. Um, and the other main reason was I didn't feel like I needed um, the, the Husky. One of the main things that I found, so the saws that I've been using in trees so far at the moment, um, to give a comparison, is the Still MS201 top handle. Amazing, near legendary um, top handle chainsaw. Um, my Husqvarna 550 XP, which to give you an idea is uh, the same chainsaw that I use for felling in forestry operations. So quite a big, heavy thing. A cool saw, no problem at all, but like quite a big, heavy thing to be dragging up a tree. And I've really found it's really hard to move around a tree when you're carrying this big, heavy saw on the side there. Um, I've also used, my boss has got a still battery two-handled saw. I believe it's the MSA 220, but I will double check on that. Um, and then actually one of the other saws I've also used is a Ryobi battery chainsaw, which is not the fastest thing in the world. It's from the one plus 18 volt range. Um, but for pruning and stuff, it's actually really good. It's really light and you can just sort of move it around quite easily and stuff. And that's kind of what I was after. I was after something that I didn't have to start in a tree. So something that wasn't gas or petrol powered. I've got pretty duff shoulders. They're okay, but like just that continuously having to start something, um, Whereas with an electric thing, you just press a button and it's it started. That was really um, exciting to me. And also um, the electric stuff always, all the electric saws that I've found, anything comparable, which is petrol, seems to be heavier. So a bit more lightweight and stuff. Um, and this is allegedly, this is the lightest production chainsaw, one of the lightest production chainsaws in the world. Um, as a bare tool, it's 1.6 kilograms, um, and it's it's literally just. I mean, I can. I'm just my my right hand here is just balancing the saw, but with my left uh, hand here, like literally just supporting it on one finger. It's really it's so light, it's unbelievable. Um, and if I just take off the scabbard there, you can see the sort of 10 inch bar that it's come spec with there. Um, the echo bar on that. Um, and one of the other things about this, which um, a lot of other people said in reviews and stuff, which I read, was that it it looks like a toy. And that's uh, like 100% true. Because I mean, if you, if you look at this sort of nice and closely there, you can see, first of all, yeah, like any chainsaw, there's a lot of plastic going on and stuff. But I mean, this just looks really kind of like, it looks a bit flimsy and stuff like that. Um, I've no doubt that it isn't because you know, I've heard a lot of really great reviews about it and stuff, but all of this is actually, it's all actually pretty solid um, and it seems like a really nice design, but it's obviously when you cut down on all the weight and stuff to try and make the saw as 
as light as it can possibly be, then um, it, it, it ends up looking a bit like something that's made by Fisher Price or something like that. It just looks really, really sort of toy like. Um, but at the same time, I've heard and seen really great reviews of it working really well in the tree. So first impressions are, yes, it looks like a toy. Um, until you take the scabbard off and you see this chain here and actually obviously it is really sharp and stuff. Um, before I say any more about this saw, um, I want to say just a little bit about the people that we got it from, which was Nigel Rafferty Ground Care, which is based in Red Ruth, just up the road from us here in Cornwall. Um, they were by far the cheapest when it came to getting Echo stock in and stuff. Julie, who I spoke to, was really amazing um, in sort of talking me through all of the stuff that she could get from Echo. She sorted out the second battery. When I actually picked it up from them the other day, um, they were like, oh, you get a free Echo t-shirt with it as well, which was really nice. Um, they gave me a pen and a pad and stuff, which was very nice to them as well. Um, and they asked me to let them know how it was how it was gonna go because they, they said a few people in the office had a go on the saw and they were like, it's really, it seems really amazing how powerful the acceleration of it is and everything in there. I haven't actually at this point, I haven't even put a battery in and, and started this yet. So um, it's also completely new to me. Um, and once I've done that, had a little play around with this stuff, then we'll go out. Um, I've got a job this weekend actually. So we'll, we'll go and work it out and stuff. But back to the reason why I sort of picked up this one rather than the Husqvarna. Obviously, save a few pennies here and there. I'm still relatively new to this, but at the same time, it's like it's worth spending money on something decent. Um, I just didn't feel like I, I needed like a big, super powerful saw. I've seen like Jake Rogers and August Hanneke both use the, the Husqvarna and stuff. And for the massive trees that they're working on, it's kind of like, yeah, you can you can understand why. But so many people rate this one. And for most of the work that I'm doing here in the UK, which is on like Sycamore, Elm, um, ash trees if they're safe enough to climb having something like this that is just really I hope it's gonna be really nice that I can just sort of you know two-handed or one-handed buzz it around and stuff um, yeah it's uh, it seems like it should do the job just fine really so yeah so back to what we've got here so obviously chainsaw here 10 inch bar as you can see supplied by echo I might one day fit like a 12 inch bar to it and see if it can go a bit bigger You've got a uh, oil point here, obviously. I've not actually opened this up yet, so let's just see how does this... Okay, so you've got a thing that pops open there. Ah, so it pops open like that, and then you... Yeah, it just won't that open. That's nice, nice little oil chain. Well, that's for, for anyone that doesn't know, um, you have oil there, that oil goes directly to the bar so that the chain and everything is kept nicely oiled and stuff. The one thing I will say, um, as a bit of a, maybe this is just residue from when it came from the factory, but there is a bit of oil on my fingers there from where I've been holding it under here. I sincerely hope that the unit isn't leaking, but that might literally just be where it's been resting on something else. I'll get some blue roll and wipe it down in a bit, but um, I'll let you know if that becomes more of a problem. Um, chain break there. Seems fairly robust. I mean, I feel like I could operate that. Yeah, it's not hard to do, but obviously you can feel it's really grabbing in there. You've got, now a lot of battery saws will have toolless chain tensioning. Um, this one doesn't. This one, you've just got a standard, like any normal chainsaw. Well, any chainsaw bigger than this would usually have two bolts in order to hold the bar in place. It looks like you've got one captive bolt there and then one free one there and a little uh, screwdriver wrench there that you can put in to tension the chain. And you also get uh, a combi wrench provided with the kit that I got. So that's all good. And again, just it's it's a relatively nice finish. It is, it's pretty much, a, a, I mean, everything on here, apart from the bar and a few of these nuts is plastic because um, obviously there's no metal crank case um, because there's nothing that you're really cranking. You've just got an electric motor in there. And so otherwise it's all plastic, which means they've managed to keep the weight down quite nicely. And also what that's good with me is that if you drop the saw or it gets bashed around in a tree or anything like that, um, if you crack one bit of plastic, 
it's generally going to be quite cheap and easy to replace and there are actually several bits to this unit here so if you cracked well, i mean actually from from about there around to there is all one piece as far as i can see but if you crack just one bit of it it generally wouldn't damage the rest of the machine and that bit would be fairly easy to replace whereas when you've got metal parts you break something metal we hit something metal and it will push into something else and do some more damage so um but obviously there is a reason that you have metal crankcases on um, other chainsaws. So um, yeah, and in generally, it just it just looks really nice. Um, so let's open one of these boxes up and get a battery out. So these are fifty volt, two amp hour batteries provided by Echo, the lithium ion. Of course, I don't think are there any kind of batteries that aren't lithium ion these days anymore. No, there's nothing else in there. Um, so, let's take one of these out of the box, check there's nothing else in there that I need. So the battery itself has actually got a, a, a relatively decent bit of weight to it. I don't know what the weight of the battery is, but I mean, that must be maybe half a kilo, maybe 800. Um, I will, if I can find the specs, put them up somewhere and you can see. Um, but I'm assuming I just slot it in here. Yeah, and that's just gone in there. Now that has increased the weight of the saw, obviously. Um, but as you can see still, I'm just holding that out with pretty much one finger, and that's not a real strain. If I put my finger behind the trigger guard there, you can see the saw is pretty much almost perfectly balanced. So that's all good. And it looks really cool actually like that. It looks really cool with the, the battery and stuff in it there. Battery, yes, so battery housing at the back. It's got lights on there so you can see how much battery you've got left in it, which is really cool. Um, okay, so I haven't looked at the instruction manual or anything like that, so I'm assuming uh, you've got a safety trigger there, there's a safety trigger there and then the main trigger there, but that won't do anything right now because I haven't pressed this button here. So you should be able to see if I just reach out there. You can see that, so that flashing green light is now on, now off, now on again. So that is telling me that the unit is on and ready to go. So hopefully, okay, something not quite happened. There. Ah, that's it. So the battery wasn't properly clicked in there. So it was like imperfect connection. Okay, don't know why that's happening. Ah, that's what it was. I had the chain brake on. So now it's a solid light. So if I put the chain brake on, the light will flash. Take the light off, solid light there. Now, my, my dog is right there. So hopefully she'll be all right, but let's see what happens. cool i think you'll agree that seems like a really decent turn of speed fairly quickly and not ridiculously loud the dog's ears picked up but she didn't go crazy or anything so that's fine um so yeah and again got that flashing light on there which is telling me that the uh, chain brake is on if i turn it to that you can see it's just gone to a solid light which means that the unit is still on if i press the button entirely it turns it off and the unit is off. So that's actually another really good safety feature as well. I know there's various different things on different battery chainsaws, like on the my boss's still one, you have to push a button in with the side of your thumb and then pull the trigger like that, um, which I don't like for the reason that if you have to use it left-handed, which sometimes you do, then um, it's harder to push it with that side of your, your finger there. Um, with my Ryobi chainsaw, I think it's literally you just push that and pull that. Um, and some of them, you know, uh, well, both of those saws actually, the Still and the Ryobi, are they're always on saws. So you put the battery in and the, the unit is live and that's it. With this, it's actually quite cool in the sense that it's, it's, it's not on unless you press that button. Um, 
and that's you know and that pressing that with your thumb is a lot easier than starting manually starting a chainsaw choking it doing everything else you have to do so yeah it's pretty cool and um, then obviously with that as well we have got the uh, they make the boxes very well, I'm not sure. You've got the Echo Lithium Ion Rapid Charger. And I mean, that looks just like a fairly robust kind of charging unit to me. That's fairly similar, I think, to the still charging unit. And the batteries that they still have are about the same sort of shape, sort of, as well. <laughs> I think they are. Um, so yeah, but um, the people at Nigel Rafferty's actually charged both these batteries up for me, which was really nice. So looking forward to um, using the charger and seeing how long it takes. It says that it should take less than an hour to fully recharge a battery, which is great. Now it also says on here that the this battery, whilst powering this chainsaw, will last for about 18 minutes. And that doesn't sound like a very long time until you sort of actually add it up and you think like, well, how long is 18 minutes? I mean, and that's like, I think that, that, that is basically, if you put this battery in and then zip tied the thing, the, the throttle open like that, and just left it, then the unit would die in 18 minutes. Obviously that's very different from what you're actually doing in a tree situation, a tree surgery situation where you might actually, you know, you might only use the saw for, you know, three or four seconds out of every minute that you're in a tree because you're moving around and stuff and to, to lop off a branch that's sort of like that, I mean, with this, it seems like it'll go through it quite quickly, but you you might only be cutting for three seconds, you know, one second to go through the bottom, two seconds to come back through the top, and then the unit sort of goes back into hibernation mode again. So, um, which is again, another positive for batteries over, it's a positive for batteries over, gas powered saws is that even when the gas saw is idling it's not using much and in most cases you might argue it's just running off fumes but it is using something and it's always producing noise um, so unless you stop it in between everything every branch that you cut which is just really inefficient so yeah excited to see how that works but with two batteries that gives me 36 minutes of, of cutting time and again this is for pruning like or it's for taking off small branches, um, <clears throat> anything up to, you know, I would argue anything up to what the guy bar can handle, really. <coughs> um, yeah, it might be a bit of a stretch trying to get that to cut through a 10 inch limb. But um, by that point, I would generally be saying to my groundy, can I have my 550 up there? Um, and I'll be sort of like chopping things down with a slightly bigger saw. So yeah. So that's the basics about everything that's sort of come in the box with it now. And um, yeah, we're going to take it up a tree, see what happens and um, let you know my honest thoughts on this saw. And uh, yeah, we're going to make that very quick cut to me being in a tree now.
Let's. So yeah, that was my first use of the Echo 2500T in a tree situation. Um, for reference, that was like a medium sized sycamore tree that I was on. And um, even though the battery did run out, um, it ran out like at the point where I was down to pretty much chogging stuff. And also I was using it on some quite big bits to sort of aggressively test it and see how big it would go. So um, yeah, but I got everything I needed to do done with one battery um so things that i liked about it were it's really lightweight it literally honestly it almost made no difference to the weight on my harness whereas again carrying the the husqvarna which weighs probably eight or nine kilos um it's it just it's pulling your harness down almost and that's, i sometimes think i need some suspenders or something when i'm carrying that thing around but with the little echo thing it's 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 literally it feels like a couple of extra carabiners it's so light which is brilliant um i did most of the cuts in that video kind of like like two-handed and it has got a really nice big handle to sort of grip on and stuff some top handle saws don't and it was really nice and easy to move it around in all the different orientations and stuff um i did do some one-handed cuts you could see um again just where it was easier to reach out and just knit through something and that was really good because it demonstrated Sometimes you need enough speed to just push through a cut and it just the, so the, the limb just drops flat like that rather than falling end first. And it on stuff that was like three or four inches thick, that was three or four inches, two, two or three inches. Um, it was absolutely fine with stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, it, um, it it got a little bit annoying having to remember to push the button each time because I'd be like, why isn't it starting? Oh yeah, I have to push the button. But I mean, in time with use, I'm sure that'd be fine. It did, it did bog down a few times when I was trying to push it into some big stuff. I think though that's kind of, that maybe more operator error because in time I will get the hang of that a bit better. Um, and just, have, just cause it, cause it, it does like it, it powers up very differently to a gas powered saw um, and it cuts differently to a gas powered saw. And that's something I can't really describe without saying you should use it. Um, but yeah, it, it, it worked really nicely. And the only things that sort of went wrong on that day were operator error on my part. I didn't film it, but there was one bit where I caught the bar in a step cut, which I did the wrong way. And that was a bit annoying. And, um, my chain did come loose quite quickly, but again, that unit was straight out of the box, straight from the factory. Um, so it was, you know, I, I just got my boss to send me up a, um, a combi spanner and I just tightened it in a tree and then it was fine straight after that. But no, it cuts really nicely. Um, it's really nice for doing, you saw those like angled like face cuts that I was doing. Um, it was really nice for putting those in. How it compared to other chainsaws, I mean, compared to the still, MSA 220C, my boss's two-handled big saw. Um, it's not as powerful as that, like 100%, it's not as powerful as that. Um, but is it better than, you know, my 150 quid Ryobi one plus 18 volt battery chainsaw? Yeah, absolutely. It's way better than that one. It's, it, and, and I would say it's on par with most top-handled saws that I've used 
in the past. Um, and I haven't tried the Husqvarna T540 iXP, but I do really want to. Now I've seen a top handle battery saw in tree, in a tree in action. I'd like to try the Husky and see what that's like. Um, but for the money for being like nearly 300 quid cheaper than the Husqvarna, um, I would say it's the Echo absolutely gets my vote. I'd say it's a seven out of 10 saw for, for professional use. It's really good. Um, would it be nicer if the battery lasted a little bit longer? Yeah, absolutely. Would it be nicer if there was a little bit more power? Yes, absolutely. And from what I have read of other reviews, because I haven't used it, but if you want that, then maybe the Husqvarna is the one to look at. But again, I've only used it on one job. It did exactly what I expected it to. Um, I really liked it. It's just so light. And this is the thing is the, the Husqvarna, the specs for it, I haven't got them to hand, but I'll try and uh, put them there. In terms of its weight, the Husqvarna is going to be heavier and it is going to be a bit more difficult to move around in a tree with it. Um, just by the virtue of it being a bit heavier. But we'll see, like, you know, if I get a chance to try the Husqvarna, um, then I will. And I'll, I'll let you know my thoughts on that. Um, once again, a big thank you to Nigel Rafferty Ground Care. This video is not sponsored by them, but they sorted me out with the saw and they were super nice. Uh, and again, their website is here. Um, and this is a new channel all about tree work in Cornwall. Um, so, uh, or tree work wherever else I end up working in trees. Um, so if you like it, please like it. If you would like to subscribe, that would be amazing. And it would help me to make some more videos and do some more stuff, which I really want to. And um, yeah, other than that, thank you very much for watching and um, yeah, happy cutting.